Yeah. All right.
Okay, can you hear me back there? Okay. Uh, and in the, middle, in the middle of the world uh, today, we talk to the whole world. And uh, it's an amazing phenomenon because we didn't start out to do any of this. We didn't start out to test the limits of the First Amendment. We weren't interested in any of these uh, experimentations upon our liberties and our freedoms. But we found ourselves in, in a nation who didn't know, who calls itself Christian. I've always heard of this country all my years as a Judeo-Christian nation. Suddenly I realized, they don't know what the Bible says. I don't know how you're going to be Christian, if you, and which means you follow the teachings of Christ. You don't even know what the Bible says. And so uh, we went out to deal with a situation in our city that had to do with people having sex in a public park. Who would think that would create trauma? It was just a park where children go at the biggest park in the city with a zoo. And they have people having sex in the park. And not just any sex, homosexual sex. So that's what we were dealing with. So my dad wrote a letter to the, uh, to the mayor. When the day came that a man came out of the wooded area where they have their mattresses and all the rest of their accoutrements back in this wooded area where they, where they dump the animal dung from the park and so forth, and was trying to lure one of his grandsons into that area. He wrote a letter to the mayor, and it was a very colorful letter because my dad is a very colorful guy. He's uh, an excellent lawyer and a smart and, a, and an excellent speaker. He knows how to tell you a thing. And when he gets done telling you, you think that was colorful. And so that's what happened. The, letter, the mayor, mayor wrote a letter back, and he said, that was a very colorful letter you wrote me. And, there, and it is. He says, it's an open, oozing, melodious sore over in that corner of the park, and it's wrong. And the mayor said, I used to be park commissioner, and I had cleaned that up, and it's been allowed to return, and we're going to deal with it. So two years passed, and they didn't deal with it. They passed an ordinance that said no sex in the park. Did we need that ordinance? Yes. Did they enforce the ordinance? No. There was no will in the city of Topeka Police Department to enforce the ordinance. The mayor is the guy in charge of the police department. So we started going to the city council meetings, and the day came that the mayor had my dad escorted out because he said, you say that you're going to deal with this situation, but you sit around like last year's Christmas trees and you're doing nothing, and the situation's still going on. And with that, the mayor said, you're calling us names. Dead trees, no metaphors in this city council chamber. And so we had the police chief escort my dad out. So with that, we said, okay, well, we'll take our cause to the, to the city, to the people. So we got some little, really hilariously un on point signs <laughs> that said stuff like, watch your kids, gays troll this park, gays in the restrooms, this park is unsafe for children, gay park, stuff like that. The park is gauge park. So it's a little play off. Anyway, so, um, that went nowhere except to bring the thunder. I mean, the second time we went out, the, um, the park where we stood at the corner of 10th and Gage, which is, a, which is a busy intersection at the corner of the park, when you enter in, it was suddenly filled with students from Kansas University, about 30 miles from Topeka, is KU. And they were there. And they had an agenda. And the agenda was to scare the tar out of us, to get us to never open, to run screaming from the park and never go back out there again. Well, they picked the wrong people. We had cut our teeth on civil rights litigation in Topeka, that the Brown versus Board of Education City. That's USD 501. That's Topeka. My dad pioneered civil rights in the city of Topeka and in the state of Kansas. And so you get some grueling, gut-wrenching litigation like that, and you get over there at that park, and some freaks are out there with some signs and talking filthy so that our, our dads had to make a line between them and us. And then they whispered in their ears filthy things that ought to not be spoken, let alone 
to some fathers that are just trying to get the city not to have people having sex in the park. Do we need to discuss having sex in the park? Is that a good idea in a public park? So we realized every day we're going out to this park. Letters to the editor start flowing, likening us to zoo animals. Everything, every, and then every part of our lives became sifted through. Just fodder for anything and everything. Police officers suddenly act like they don't have enough sense to put in a thimble. They're going to do this and do that, and things were happening. It was bizarre. So, um, but, but we weren't going to be run off. We had to get to the bottom of whether or not we had a cause. Were we right? And there are signs, by the way. We didn't go out as a church group. We just went out there over this issue. We didn't talk about God. We didn't talk about the Bible. When anything like that, but yet these signs that these people are holding from KU said stuff like, true churches preach love. And I'm thinking, who's talking about churches? Who's talking about God? And week after week after week pass, and each time we go to that park, we got to go straight back over there and decompress. I mean, it was crazy stuff going on. Stuff going on at night, vandalism starts, and all kinds of crazy stuff. Our lives were turned upside down. So we decided we better find out what's going on here, and we better hang in here, and we did. And by and by, we realized these people want to talk about God, and they want to talk about the Bible. Well, we're, we are a church. We just happen to be a church. This is a group that's a church group. So we'll tell you about what God and the Bible has to say about this issue of homosexuality. One guy holding a sign that says, I hugged your kid today, and it felt good. So, yikes. Anyway, um, yeah, we got a sign after about six, seven weeks. One of, one of my brothers was off work that week on vacation. He spent his week making a big sign. And we had the local Wiccan. I didn't know we had a Wiccan. And she was, I mean, she calls herself. She's a witch. She runs the coven. I didn't know all this was going on in Topeka. <laughs> but there they were, and she's got a following and a bunch of people, freaky-looking people, things I, uh, stuff you don't see and you don't know. So she comes. So here we come down to that corner, and Tim comes with that sign, plunk. It's on, it's on a frame. It's so big. And it says, God hates gays. That witch, I was watching this thing unfold. She started dancing, jumping up and down, screaming like she was possessed. So we watched this drama, and as we watched it unfold, suddenly the discussion changed. It's no longer about people having sex in a park. This is about God loves everyone. And yikes, that's, what about Esau? What about God hates workers of iniquity. What about these plain words of scripture? Did you not read that part? What do you say about that? How are you going to answer this? What do you mean God loves everyone? That's what we start hearing. Until one day one of my sisters was standing close, and I think it was March. I have seven sisters, but I can be wrong. But anyway, she says, I think they give us the fact that these people are in a fury over the God hates. And so that brought us down the trail, and that gets us from that day to this day. We realized this country was on a short track to Sodom. So we went about to say, please don't do that. If you go the way of Sodom, you're going, God's promise to suffer her fate. And it's not a goodie. So um, that's how, that was the way it started, and that's the path it took. In the meantime, I had six children. Now I have 11 children. My children grew up on the streets of this country the mean streets of Duke, America. Every day for 20 years we've been on these streets. We've crisscrossed this country. We've seen every state, all major cities. And we've listened to the words. And when the prophet said, the last prophet, the last, only four chapters in Malachi, and he ends chapter two like this, you have wearied the Lord with your words. And you say, how have we wearied him? He said, when you say two things, God loves everyone, and there is no God. I'll testify from a vast body.
body of experience. Those are the two things you hear on the mean streets of doomed America more than any other words besides F you and that kind of stuff. <laughs> but if there's a thought, an actual thought engaged, those are the two things you hear more than anything else. So, should I tell you anything else? I'll ask a few questions. Uh, you, you raised a few uh, questions there. Uh, if I give me allowed to start, uh, I, I am allowed to start, so. Take the name's Tim. Yes. Um, surely I'll ask a couple of questions, and then uh, then I'd rather turn it over to the audience, okay? But I think what a lot of folks want to know about, regardless of how they happen to feel about uh, gay rights or gay issues, uh, um, they don't understand uh, the connection you make between uh, your anger over, quote, American tolerating gays. And, and your protests at military funerals. And I think a lot of people want to know, quite frankly, how in God's name can you go to a funeral where someone has perhaps lost their only child, and you're standing outside there with a sign that says, thank God for dead soldiers. How do you, how do you explain, how do you so justify? I think I hear two questions. First, how you, what's the lead? Homosexuality right, to dead and then, soldiers. And how, from a simple compassion standpoint, how do you defend what you're doing? First of all, the, the, there's no leap. This is uh, all interrelated. This is dot connecting from your rebellion against God, which includes, you see, you don't just get a nation that says it's okay to be gay. It starts somewhere. It's a path. They go down the path. And the path starts with what we're going to have back in the 60s. We're going to teach everybody that divorce is great. And then have a lot of movies made out of Hollywood about blended families, and God hates divorce. That's what he says. Malachi 2 says, God hates divorce. I didn't say those words. I found those words, and I believe them. So then they say, well, that's all good. Christ said divorce plus remarriage equals adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. This nation has a policy of adultery. I'm saying by the time you get to where you've got dead soldiers and uh, you turn the country over to the fags. You did a whole bunch of stuff before you got there. It's just the bottom rung on the depravity chain. So you know that you're looking at a doomed people. Those people's destruction is coming. They, they're in any other outcome. You got to think about all that you know. Don't forget Pompeii. Those people, Pompeii was the twin sister to Sodom. And you know details about that. Nobody can say we don't know about Pompeii. They just recently made those art exhibits that were tucked away under lock and key because of the filthy nature of them, available to be looked at, now probably to never be put away. We have a global, it's okay to be gay thing going on. Christ said that when it's time for his imminent return, which means a lot of destruction, it's going to look like it looked in Sodom on a global scale. He says it's going to look like it looked before he destroyed the antediluvian world. On a global scale. It was a global thing. Eight people went on the ark. By some count, 16 million. By some, 12, 8, however many billion there were. They all went straight to hell. Every other living creature, human, went straight to hell. So uh, the connection is you, you turn the country over to the facts. Now, your soldiers are coming home in body bags. They chose new gods. This nation took on the god of Sodom. The verse says they chose new gods. Judges 5, 8, semicolon. Then was war in their gates. God says, I'm going to put a hook in your jaw and drag you into a war that you cannot win. He did that. We're never going to win that war. And furthermore, it's going to be your undoing. When I hear a news story last week that says there's nostalgia for the Clinton case, because the economy was so so good. I was alive. That was my days. I know the Clinton days. And it's true. This economy was in the best shape it's been in before or since, I think, in my lifetime. Maybe when I was really little and I don't know, but what I remember. But when Bush took office, and then 9-11 happened, largely because of the policies of Clinton and his don't ask, don't tell, and I'm going to do this, but, but he didn't do near as bad. Bush called himself a Christian, yet he had major policies of disobedience. He was all things to all people. He had a wife who was going to
tell you it's good to kill your babies. He's going to have his twins over here that are going to tell you that it's okay to be gay. And, oh, I'm going to go over to this fag wedding when it's not lawful for fags to marry. And on and on and on. And meanwhile, cloaking himself in a robe of righteousness. It was a fraud. He wasn't righteous. He was leading this country down the primrose. And then he took this country into a war, lying every step of the way about weapons of mass destruction. And thou shalt not kill. There are no exceptions to that. When this country took their brats into that country, Iraq and Afghanistan, and their children, the children of doomed America, are over there using some of those human beings, their neighbors, for target practice and other crimes that have played out, and more and more recently with the WikiLeaks. While they sit around acting like they're outraged at the people who told about the crimes, not because of the crimes. There's no mourning for the sins of this nation. There's no repentance anywhere on the landscape. So you've got to start with your crimes against God, point A, to point B. You're dead soldiers. He says, I will dash your children to pieces before your eyes. He said, you chose that which I did not choose. You did those things in which I didn't delight. So now I am going to, your children will bow down to the sword. And I'm going to uh, kill them with the sword. I'm going to drag them into battle. All these words are repeatedly told by the prophets. There's nothing new under the sun going on in this country. This country is on a short track to her destruction. And today it's imminent. Nothing gets better, it only gets worse. So, so I want to be clear. Again, your sign reads, thank God for dead soldiers. Yes. Thank God for 9-11. Yes. You're, okay. Can I interpret that as you're celebrating that? That's a good thing. Well, Hurrah. I'm saying this. Our soldiers are dying. You've got Hurrah. three good reasons. Three people died in New York City. Yeah, you've got elsewhere. three good reasons to, to say thank God. First one is, is that every one of us deserve death and hell. But he didn't kill us in that 9-11. In that he didn't kill us yet. I'm looking at people who've got the breath of life in them. God says, I hold the breath of life. I kill, I make alive, and there's no God with me. I'm alone. So he could have, he could have killed you, and we deserve it. So thank God he didn't do that. Now you have an opportunity to repent. Christ told those people at the Tower of Shalom, he used the event of their death to say, you think those people were worse sinners than all the rest of you? I tell you, they were not. He chose who he was going to make an example of. He's making an example of these soldiers all over this country and others. There's a lot more people dying in this country than those soldiers. Anyway, and plus he says he's furious with them. But the second reason is because you're instructed. You're instructed to thank God for everything. The third reason is, is that if you serve God, you know you're not being tricked. We're not going to stand out here for 10, 12, 15, 20 years telling you that God's word promises you a thing and you're supposed to obey the commandments of God and then nothing happens. No, he doesn't roll that way. He sends his people out to bind you to his standards and then it says, it makes Psalm 78, describes the unencumbered path his wrath to flow in. And he's not going to let you do it if you're not obedient. You don't get to be doing all these things on the, and then stand on the streets and tell people they can't do it. You don't get to be a hypocrite and tell these words to the nation. He says, if you take forth the precious from the vile, then you shall be as my mouth. And so that's, is that clear enough? <laughs> I think I told you more than you asked. <laughs> that's, that's enough. Um, uh, one more question, then I'll actually, at that point, I'll turn it over to the audience. Uh, I have probably two dozen questions here. We're not going to get to those. But uh, I asked this one at the other session. I'll ask it again here. A little bit uh, uncomfortable, but I think people wonder about it. Speaking of hypocrisy, um, uh, you're here with your two daughters, uh, Megan and Rebecca, and they're driving home tonight to uh, Detroit and flying out of there, um, driving down U.S. 127, 127, Several. 127, Several. 127. <laughs> driving down the highway and a, and a semi-truck runs into you, and that's it for Megan and Rebecca. 
they're both dead. Yes. And I show up at their funerals with a sign that says, thank God for dead daughters. Or you die, and I show up at your funeral. Thank God for dead Shirley's. Um, how do you feel about that? Is that okay? And would you defend my First Amendment rights to do that? Um, first, it's not only okay, it's absolutely essential. Because for the first time in your life, <laughs> you didn't exactly answer it this way last time, but that can make this point since you brought it to me. It's occurred to me. It would be the first time in your life, I can say your miserable life, that you showed love for your neighbor. <laughs> you got out there and you said, connect the dots, dummies. You've got dead children because you've been up to something. You have been disobedient and a rebel, teaching rebellion or something else. You understand? Like Heath Ledger. Heath Ledger stood up and he taught rebellion, and he was cut off. He was cut off. Not everyone who teaches rebellion is cut off, but you see, the verse is, because sentence against an evil work is not speedily executed. The hearts of the sons of men are fully set in them to do evil. So therefore, you can stand up and say, this is just a crapshoot. You don't know. It's, it's just the uncertainty of life going on up in here. It's not a crapshoot. You can disobey, but there's going to come a day when you're going to pay the piper. That if you don't, if someone in my church or my family or my house turns up dead, and this nation doesn't make it so there is no passing gridlock down the highways of Kansas, in and out, shame on you. You want us to celebrate your death? I'm saying it's not even, it would, it would be celebrating, but not for the right reasons. It would be celebrating. It would be celebrating because of your angry rebellion against God. This is the, I'm going to get even with you up in here because you've been telling us these words that we hate. Well, go for it. Go for it. God knows. See, there ain't anything hidden. All things, it says, the verse says, are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He knows your heart. I mean, that's what you get to answer for, what's going on in your heart. Quick follow-up to, to your comments. Uh, do I teach rebellion? I thought I talked to you. And I don't know. I don't know what you teach. Because I, I don't hear you. I don't see you. But I you do said know. on your website that teachers hate their students. Yes. <laughs> it's true. I'm I love you, Sam. I'm going to give you some pretty mean tests, but. Uh, <laughs> no, tests are good. Tests are good. Here, here it is. There is a standard definitions given by God about what constitutes loving your neighbor, which means everyone, every human being alive with you in this earth. That's your neighbor. One is, preach this gospel that you find written in the book. Don't change it. Don't massage the message. Don't make it palatable for rebels. Don't try to trick people into obedience. Just tell them the words, plain and straight. If you can't get them to be obedient and can't get them to see that this is the best thing for them to do, forget them. Forget them. Just do your duty to them. Because what God told Ezekiel was that if they die in their sins and you didn't warn them, their, their blood is going to be required at your hand. So whatever else you're teaching them, don't add any elements in there that teach blasphemy or rebellion against God. I don't know what you're doing. I know that if there's someone not doing that, of the teacher variety, they are the statistically insignificant minority. So let's just call you that. <laughs> and your name is Tim. I'm just saying. I forgot about the fact that my favorite, well, one of my favorite brothers is named Tim, Timothy. And all of a sudden you said, you're, okay, never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you're going to have lots of questions that I'd rather hear from folks in the audience. Uh, if you have questions, I'm Spencer Austin. Hi, Spencer Austin. A couple good questions for you. I'm kind of interested to join the Westboro Church. Yeah. But I've got, no, 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 no. Listen. And we'll give you the same answer okay. no matter what. Yeah, I've got, I've got a list of questions. I call this the checklist of hell for Spencer Austin, okay? <laughs> when, I was, when, okay <laughs> when I was five, I sold a piece of candy from a grocery store. I never asked for forgiveness. Someone wanted to help with that? Um, when you were five, you stole a piece of candy? Yeah. Did your parents know about that? No. So, because you just made that up? No, I see. It was true. I was calling the camera. My aunt busted me. <laughs> Your aunt busted you. Yeah. What happened? I don't remember. I was five years old. Did you know better? I was five. Well, there you go. Okay. In the past, I've dated Jewish women. Um, am I going 
help that too. Well, what does that mean, dated? I've been with Jewish women. I had a Jewish girlfriend for three years. What does that mean, then, when you say dated?
I go to that. That is a Catholic so, whore. It's so, a Catholic monster. So, Priest, Ray, every single, children. Every single, one of, every single one of my fathers that I've had in the past have been pedophiles. Have they touched me? No, they have not touched me. Every one of your fathers? What? what? Every single church, there's a different father. I've moved around a lot. Don't call them father. That's what Christ said, don't we have to think? My dear, I rest my case. They're not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're just another social club. Okay, so... And they rape children. I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Bible, and I'm Catholic. So huh? I'm going Priests I rape children. Okay. Yes, of course you are. You don't believe God. You don't believe Christ. Or you wouldn't be over in that whorehouse. <laughs> Priests rape children. How you won't get that conduct wrapped in anything Christ-like? Priests rape children. Have I... I don't think, hello, is this thing on? Priests rape children. <laughs> What are you going to do with that? Are you going to show me facts? You can check the new facts in there. Every single one of those priests have raped children. I was never how raped. Many, how many? I was never raped. How many of them do you need to be raping children before you run There's from that monster? in the church. What? But. There's what? There this, you understand, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ does not have raping priests. That we don't call a priest in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They just don't preach. They're the pastor. Yeah, who's, who said that? I don't even care who said it. Did you say that there are some raping pre preachers too? Yes. yes, and raping rabbis and raping imams, or however you say that. I'm saying that is a piece of solid evidence to you that I am not dealing with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ here. <laughs> then run! Get heavy on the run in all these spots. If they don't have a watermark in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you give a care about your never dying soul, run! What? From that church? From that particular church or all of them? Well, if you find the mothership, like the Pope, who has you kissing his butt and his ring, run! There is no standard in the scriptures. You cannot have, according to the scriptural dictates, church discipline when you've got a bunch of people spread out all over the globe. How are you going to have church discipline? How are you going to vouch for those people that they are being faithful to the written word? You've cast your lot in with the raping priests. You, Every dime you give, you are paying the salary of the raping priests. Every time you park your car in the parking lot, you are giving your support. And I know you all know about this because you all carefully distance yourself and put a lot of words out all over the world about how you're going to let the Westboro Baptist Church know that you aren't going to have any part or lot with us. So I know you know how. And I can do what you've got to do. But understand this. You know that there are priests raping children and you are sponsoring them and supporting them. I'm not supporting those priests. Oh yes you are. My priests my you don't church. get to separate. No. Every one of those priests and every one of those parishes knows that there are raping priests. I have watched. Have you ever seen the documentary um, Deliver Us from Evil? Made by Catholics, I might add. Maybe you ought to make yourself knowledgeable. Your ignorance is no excuse. Your, hun, when you lack knowledge about a thing, that makes you ignorant of those facts. It's not a name that I'm calling you. It's a condition that you find yourself in. You're ignorant of the facts on the ground. You should not be ignorant of the facts on the ground, and you should not be sensitive and thin-skinned about matters of your never-dying soul. You should be interested first about that, and second about your pride in this life. In fact, put the pride over in the box, and put it under the bed, and leave it there. Forget it. Fact trash it. Burn it. Whatever it takes. Well, so how about one more question, and then if some other have questions. Yeah, sure. So, I want to thank you. So, I guess it looks like my life is fucked already, so I'm going to go to hell. As it is, as a Roman Catholic, as supporting if certain that's actors. If, if that's and you what know what? As, as, with, as, do that. as one would say, I'm ready for this ride. Let's go. Thank you.
follows you in your sin, then we suck as humans. And that's it's fine if you think that. But you're going to have to stand that you're going to be judged by. It's not your standard. Do you understand? Christ, Christ said that. What you just said was, I don't care what those standards of God are. And you acknowledge that you know the standards, and then you said, and F it. That's what you said. Okay, my life's fucked. Again. Exactly. Right. Well, yeah, no, I thought, okay, wait a minute now. <laughs> so here's the answer for you. If you sincerely were concerned about your life being that, mm -hmm. here's the verse for you. If today, you today, will hear my yes. voice. If today you will I hear obey. Your voice, yes. You understand? I, I, I told you. God. So he says he'll never mention your sins, ever, if you repent and put it away today. That's what the confession is for. So no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, so you're wrong to the end of the uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, next uh, question. Okay. Hi. 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 My name is Sienna. And, okay, if, how can you guys see us as a nation that accepts homosexuality when there has been hate crimes and there has been, like you said, it's oh. been unlawful for the Mary? And, like, how can you see us as a nation that accepts homosexuality? Have you ever heard someone tell you? And there are millions of people who think the same way that you do. Oh, that my goodness. No. No. Yeah. No. They don't think the same way we think. Of course about, they don't. About the facts? Yeah. No, my dear. They might tell you that they'd be like that guy saying, uh, it's okay to be gay, but you can't, you can't marry up in here and you can't stop children. <laughs> They're going to carve out all kinds of hypocritical exceptions. You tell people that it's okay to be gay, shut up. Let them do the same thing you choose. If you're going to depart from the standards of God and create your own standards, well, that's the end of that. The end of that road is you got no standard. You got nothing. You got some people, so you have doomed America. Well, if we are a nation that's the exception, then why aren't they lawfully allowed to marry? Well, my dear, they are lawfully about, allowed to marry. Did you not know that we have about a seven? States in the District of Columbia? Seven? Excuse me, let me finish. We have a constitution. We live by a constitutional democracy, supposedly. It's a republic, really. In your constitution, it says that each state must give full faith and credit to the other states. So if you go to any of those states and marry, and you go back to your home state, and then you decide, oh, we need to get a divorce, you're going to find that all the states have got same sex divorce in place. So you, they recognize, they give full faith and credit to that marriage that they got from the state that permitted it. Well, what does the divorce matter if you guys it are against the divorce anyway? I'm trying to, try to follow the bouncing ball. We were talking about that they can marry but in this country. But you're talking about divorce. I, I was showing you by way of example how they have got to let you, they have to recognize your same-sex marriage. Everywhere in the country, it's called the full faith and credit clause. I bet you can look it up. <laughs>
You have to obey the law. Contrary to that law, they arrested me. And they held me in bonds for three years, two months, and 18 days. In this county. I'm saying they held me in bonds. They hoped that they could put me on trial, put me in jail, and take my children away. That's what they hoped. The God of all creation who sent us onto these streets watches our backs. Excuse me? They couldn't. You had a right to <coughs> No, my dear. No, that's not why they, that case went away. But you didn't have a right to trial. I had the right to a trial, but we're talking about doomed America here. Do you think the outcome in the criminal case? Excuse me. Do you think that the outcome in a criminal trial? I did have a right to trial, and in fact, it was on the day the trial was supposed to begin that that case went away. But we were ready to go to trial before a jury. Do you understand? Just like the civil trial. We have a First Amendment. It was lawless. The Fourth Circuit said, what are you kidding me? Those soldiers died for your rights. No, my dear. You put me on trial. How are you going to say they died for my rights? They died for your rights to be defended under the First Amendment. That constitutes Oh, my gosh. The First Amendment says, you may not put me on trial for my religious exercise and for my speech. There are five parts to that First Amendment. We are engaged in all of them. Yet they put me on trial anyway. You put me on trial in this country. Don't say you're fighting for my rights. Outside off at Air Force Base is where we were when they arrested me for that flag. It, God requires that you not only obey his law, but included in that obeying his law is that you obey the laws of man. This nation violated the law of the land in both of those instances. So don't lie about, I'll tell you what they're fighting for. They're fighting for fags to marry. They're fighting for you to live like filthy brute beasts. They're fighting for you to say, I can do what I want, and then sit around and pretend that someone in the Middle East gives a hoot about your freedoms to speak. Not, they hate you because of your crimes against their fellow countrymen, they hate you because of your hypocrisy. They're coming around talking about our First Amendment, using it as a club all over the world. And then you're going to squish like a bug this tiny little church in the middle of your country. Yeah, there's your religious freedom. Uh, hold on, folks. We've got people. No, we've been uh, in our microphone. Side. I just have they one love question. Come on down here. I just have one more question. Okay, sorry. That's okay. About, like, the doomed America and, you know, the Dutch your destruction is imminent, let's be putting a fine point on that. Well, people have been dying in wars for centuries. Has America recently become doomed, or have we always been doomed? No, you went down the we're doomed trail when you turned the country over to the facts. But people have always been dying. That's why, if they're being punished for that, then why why are we newly doomed? I guess is my question. Because you turned the country over to the facts. They died in those wars, that's right. A lot more soldiers died in the most were in World War II, and before that, World War I and the Civil War. All whatever was going on on the ground back there, that rebellion that brought that horrible wrath from God, here's the way the prophet would answer you. Why should you be stricken more and more? You just revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, from the crown of the head to the sole of the foot. You are wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, and you haven't even put on a stinking bandage. What's a good country to live in, though? Today? Well, let, let folks ask at the uh, microphone there. You're welcome to get in line and do this in a more orderly manner. Go ahead. Jason Gilman. Um, I, I had another question, but I figured I'd change it up. Uh, your, your family has a couple of attorneys, correct? Your dad was an attorney who I believe got disbarred, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. He was disbarred by the state court. Okay. And, and, and the only time I believe, I think if you research it, American jurisprudence, the federal court would not disbar him because they said that was unlawful what they did to him in the state court. And the reason they did it is because of his civil rights work. Okay, so, so clearly remember, clearly Brown versus Board of Education was the Topeka Board of Education. All right, so, so clearly you think that uh, the disbarment was, was incorrect. Nevertheless, what's your question? Okay, well, my question is obviously, at, you know, man, uh, well, man's not God, so clearly he is, you know, fallible. Um, if that's the case, then certainly well, what, could what you be incorrect in, you know, in your interpretation of the Bible of God's well, do word? You need, are you, do you think I'm interpreting thou shall not kill? 
Does that need interpretation? But Thou shalt not kill. Yeah, for dead soldiers. Excuse me. Yeah, uh, that's, she, that's a valid point. <laughs> I mean, are you, you glad there are, are you glad there are soldiers are dead that they get Be killed? ye thankful. Does that verse need interpretation? Be ye thankful. And that's one verse out of dozens that say, be thankful for all things. Be thankful. And be specifically. Ye so thankful. be thankful specifically about dead soldiers. You can look at Psalm 58. It says, the righteous shall rejoice when he sees the vengeance. Yea, he will wash his feet in the blood of the witness. So, so clearly so the man will, will say, in some cases, uh, yeah. uh, God who holds the breath of life, that he kills and he makes alive. You're, yeah, it's there. That that is that is your your classic arrogant ass. I love that swagger, dude. Do it again. No, and you're an arrogant ass. Oh, sorry. I'm done. Oh, sorry. You're a swaggering something. And not an ass. Yes, I am. And the answer about my dad? Yeah. 
Well, what do you think? How do you think you're out? Uh, he didn't like it. But, you know, I didn't like it either by the time I told him. <laughs> I have a quick question about living in a world where we're all like fag enablers, is how you put it right? We're all fag enablers. Are you? I, hold on a second. Back. Um, <laughs> well, you we live in a world that. where we have to wear clothes, we have to drive cars, you know, the same, That doesn't obviously. make you a fag enabler. Keep interrupting me. Sorry. What, yeah, here's the first question. Why do you interrupt people and we can't interrupt you? Did you hear it? Go ahead. Well, I heard it, but I've been listening the whole time as well. Okay. And you've done that. And you know what? So That's, how That's how I roll. That's how I roll. You're introducing You're introducing facts that are not in the evidence. Eggs and war and killing. See? We don't what you are as a mantra and stalker, you don't give a hoot about what we say. You're just up here to say, you call us fag enablers, is that it? Fag enablers. You don't care. No, I didn't call you that. My question is, are you? Can you tell me? I don't know you. How would I tell there, you there anything? Are fags that make your By your attitude, I'm pretty fags sure you are. And your car companies that you drive the cars. There's fags everywhere. Get over it. Exactly. So you're supporting them. You're an enabler exactly. yourself. Are you going to hell or are we just going to hell? I'm confused. No, it does not make you a fag enabler if you buy a garment. You think I'm going to run around naked, and how do you know where I get my clothes? Well, you can go to every extreme, but we can't call you out, is that it? No, you can call me out, but why don't you first bother, would you come into your math class and call out your math teacher when you haven't bothered to read the textbook? Well, I'm sure you would. Yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> See, I rest my case. You're not interested in an answer to your question. You're interested in mocking sure I, I because you don't like it. What's no, you're not sincere. It's full of facts. You don't have it. avoided that. You've said that's, that. That's my question. You've said that. How do we avoid You've it? You've said that. If, if You've broken. said that. Okay, then it's We've got the question. <laughs> now, if you want the answer, but now. You ready? You ready? Yes. Paul said, we are in the world. We cannot go out of the world. And we're not talking to you about not accompanying with, but that's not about fag enabling. Here's the question. The fag that you're associating with, you understand? Not buying your groceries or buying your garments, buying the necessities of life. That's not enabling them. It's your deliberate refusal to warn your neighbor that his sin has taken him to hell that makes you a fag enabler. And worse than that, it is all of this, it's okay to be gay crap. Are you saying that you don't say it's okay to be gay? Do you say it's okay or not? To be gay? Yes. I'm not here to say that. I'm asking you, do you say it? You've asked me, are you a fag enabler? Some <laughs> questions must be asked because I clearly don't well, know you're you. You're so confused. You're not answering the question. Oh, you dude, listen to you crawl. Things. You're crawling. <laughs> you you <laughs> don't answer. You don't answer. Do you say it's okay to be gay? No, I grew up a Christian like yourself. I was taught. Oh, in the so Bible why are you contending with me? Are right. Why are you out here? Do you warn those sodomites that their sin has taken them to hell? <laughs> Do you warn those sodomites that their sin has taken them to hell? No, of course not. Why? It's not my place. It is your place. If they're going to hell, they're going to hell. It says, don't hate. This is the verse. Oh, no. That's a cop-out. That's a cop-out. Here's the verse. Don't hate your neighbor. In no, it doesn't say that, little girl. It doesn't say that, little girl. Don't so substitute your judgment for God's judgment, because that new standard you set is the one you're going to be judged by. Why don't you let me finish now? I forgot what I was saying. It says, don't hate your neighbor in your heart. Don't suffer their sin upon them, but in any wise rebuke them. Warn them their sin is taking them to hell, or you hate your neighbor in your heart. I am the Lord your God. Love your, oh, I'm sorry, I left out the comma, love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord your God. So he's told you what it means. He's told you that this is loving your neighbor. He gave you the definition for it, and then he said, and the reason for you to do it is because I am the Lord your God. I said to do it. This is my creation, my standards. Do it. That's a good enough reason. That's great. Yeah, was, your voice tone was great. Um, Thank you. Just one more question. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, do you believe 
gays were born gay, or do you think they just choose to be? Gay? Well, my dear, I've read Romans 1, so I know exactly how they got there. And you didn't read it, or you wouldn't have asked me that question. It so says, you can read things and not believe it. I, I, I don't believe everything I read. There's a ton of shit on Google, which you're probably searching your little... I don't, I'm going to talk. I didn't get this on Google. Oh, I'm sorry. You didn't know Romans was in the Bible. Oh, that's the problem. Romans. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Acts. Romans is the sixth book in the New Testament. Thank you. I grew up in uh, Catholic school my whole life. Yeah, well, that's, well, that would explain why you're the Bible dumb. The Bible dumb. Yeah. They don't teach you what the Bible says in Catholic schools. Priests rape children, dude. Well, all right. It's not in their interest to tell you what the Bible says because then you might question them about what they're doing and what they're up to. They made us read the Bible through my... Then why don't you know what Romans 1 says? I, I know what it said. I no, know. you don't. Well, you wouldn't have asked me how did you get to be gay. It says for the rap. Start at verse 18. Start at whatever you want. I'll tell you what you it says and you tell me if I've interpreted something. Why don't we... Tell you what. Let me be the referee here. Why don't we continue this at the end of the... Uh, uh, yeah, why don't you go and scare up the Bible while you wait? And Romans 1, 18 to 32. Just one more question. Just one Real fast. Do you know the language the Bible was written? Do you know the language? What? the language the Bible was originally written in? What's your point, man? Yes or no? Are you asking me, do I read Hebrew? Yes. Well, do you know I have, I, I can read a little Hebrew and I can read a little Greek, but so I have, excuse me, I have a strong exhaustive concordance that breaks that down for you, so I don't have to know how to read those. Right. How good is that? That's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Squeeze in one more question, you promise it'll be quick? Yeah, it'll be quick. I just need a one word answer. Um, I've got two very short questions. First off is something that we all have in common in here, I guarantee it, is um, our clothes aren't 100% wool or linen, and Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 11 says, do not wear clothes of wool and linen woven together. So I'm assuming you guys are going to join me in hell for that. Second question well, if you think is, that's the hey, wait, don't second do question, it. who wrote the Bible, God or man? God. The Holy God Spirit? God wrote it? Excuse me. The God answer is contained it? in 2 yes, no. Pe uh, Peter 4, where he says, it did not come by the will of man, but the Holy Spirit moved those Holy men of old, right? So wait, before. the Holy Spirit moved the men's hands? He moved so men are thank you. Yeah, I said.